begins right now on Speed. The Rogers Center in Toronto, Ontario, Canada is the site of the opening round of the Amp Mobile World Supercross GP Supercross Lights Competition. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside former Supercross Series champion Jeff Emig. Good crowd on hand here tonight to watch this gate dropping event for the Supercross Lights. And Jeff, tonight is really all about pride. Yeah, there's no points involved here. It's a nice uh, couple of warm-up rounds up here in Canada before the West Coast starts. Well, let's show you the Supercross Lights 411 and how these riders will make it through tonight's program to the main event. Two heat races. Top nine will go straight to the main. There will be no semis here tonight. Just one last chance qualifier, which will give us our final four riders for a 16 rider, 15 lap main event. Let's head downstairs now to the third member of our broadcast crew. Here's Aaron Bates with a progressive direct pre-race report. Well guys, I was able to catch up with Troy Adams earlier this afternoon and he was telling me how excited he is to be racing for the same team he raced for back in 2004, the WBR Suzuki team. A lot has changed since then. Buddy Antonis is now the manager. Also, a bigger budget, which means they have more parts that they can use. More to be back in the factory Suzuki as well. So much has changed for the best and Troy Adams says this, keep your eye on him. Expect a whole lot more from Troy Adams this season. Here's a look at your starting grid across the top of the screen as we get underway with Supercross Lights, heat number one. Troy Adams on the 34, the Suzuki Mounted Rider, jumping out to the early lead. Well, there we go, Troy Adams starting out uh, the season just like he wanted to, uh, proving that he was the right man to be picked for the Rockstar Suzuki team. The dirt here, Jeff, in the Toronto in the Toronto area inside the Rogers Center, a little bit different, and very soft. Well, it's soft and it's rocky. Right now, the track's perfect. They just groomed it. Uh, the track is going to get uh, deteriorated. Every jump face is going to be rutted all the way across as the night goes on. Troy Adams in the early lead. Michael Willard on the 84, holding down second. William Ainsworth on the 798, giving chase on the Kawasaki. Yeah, this is a chance for a lot of these younger guys, maybe some of the uh, you know, Canadian riders, to get some experience. Um, only a couple of the factory guys from the States are here, like in this particular heat. So this is giving these guys some good time to run up front, you know, get some experience, see what that's like. Benjamin Ritter on the 695. He runs back in fourth position. The rider out of St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Watching the battle for second continue here as Adams has really started to open up a pretty healthy lead over these two. Yeah, definitely. Right now, the track, after a couple laps, uh, after it's been groomed, once it gets a couple of little lines in it, the track will be the fastest maybe that it is all night right now. There's the 695 of Ritter. Oh, and look at this. Adams is down. Troy Adams. Jeff, he was gone. Yeah, he was definitely gone. He uh, must have clipped that uh, something stuck to his brake. You've seen him knock it out. He might have cased a little jump and uh, got one of these nasty rocks stuck in his brake, and that locked it up instantly. Let's take a look at this, see if we can figure out what happened to Adams. Yeah, it's a triple in. He comes up a little bit short. Oh, yeah, he definitely got a brake stuck in there when he came up short. Well, Adams gets the bike going again, but he's got a long way to go to get back in the hunt for the win here in heat number one. We'll be right back to Toronto. There's a good look from the crowd's perspective inside the Rogers Center here in Toronto, Canada. Your new race leader is Michael Willard, who has taken over out front. Willard out of Thornville, Ohio, was sitting in second behind Troy Adams, who just cased a jump. 
while way out in front with the early lead. He's now buried all the way back in 10th. Remember, only the top six transfer straight out of the heats. Yeah, Willard pulling out a couple seconds right now. Uh, he's putting a good moto. This is the fight for third that we're watching. This should be Benjamin Ritter and Frank, Frank Burns, but it looks like Burns is now in front of Daryl Eklund as that has changed around a little bit. Yeah, just looking at the lap times there, Burns was just a little bit quicker than Ainsworth. This is, uh, looks like he's uh, focused on going to the front right now. That's Eklund on the 312, who has worked his way up into that position now. And Burns falls in behind him on the 899. Notice these guys, there's a couple couple different lines coming across the start straight there. Same thing in the, after you go across the start straight. If you go inside, you got a little kicker to double up on. If you go outside, you just take a single. With two laps to go, the riders in green holding the opportunity to transfer straight out. A little bit of lap rider getting in the way there, but these guys are battling it out, and uh, they're, they're going to take nine out of these uh, uh, you know, out of these heat races. And it's right, top nine. I said top six earlier. It's actually top nine going straight to the main. And Troy Adams right now still sits one spot out of that, according to timing and scoring. Now look, he's protecting the inside there. He knows, uh, this guy knows what a danger those uh, 180 degree turns can be on the last lap of somebody yeah. right on, and you gotta, you gotta keep, it, uh, keep it inside. Good battling here. Opportunities to take multiple lines through there, and it works to the advantage of Robert Marshall on the 97. Yeah, Robbie Marshall came from out of qualifying off the start. He was pretty far back, and looks like he got a little bit more aggressive and uh, came through these guys. He was using that one line I was talking about there. Now, where's Troy Adams? It looks like he might have made his way up to ninth. So Adams might just get the transfer. Here he comes, working his way to the finish. Remember, it's top nine going through. We've crossed over through sixth. And Adams will actually get seven. So Troy Adams, after having the early lead, makes a big mistake, but is able to battle back and get himself a straight transfer to tonight's main event. Here's a look at the results. Top nine going straight on to tonight's main event. Our winner, Michael Willard, gets to go talk to our lady on the floor. Here's Aaron Bates. Well, Michael Willard is trying to get his foot in the door with a factory ride Red Bull KTM. Mike, what a way to start off the season. Yeah, thanks. You know, uh, you know coming here, I know I know a lot of the teams don't come to the world rounds for the lights class, but, uh, you know, KTM's here to support me and uh, Martin Davalos and Zach Osborne. And, I don't know, it was just awesome to win, win the first qualifier, but uh, I don't know, uh, I want to go out for the main and uh, try to do the same. Uh, and I think I can finish top five, so it should be good. Great job out there. Michael Willer, your winner, heat number one. Tomorrow on Speed, the stars of Supercross stay north of the border at BC Place in Vancouver. Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, and Chad Reed will all be in action. Who will come out on top? Supercross from Vancouver tomorrow afternoon at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on Speed. Show you the starting grid for race number two here tonight. Dunlop starting grid. Zach Osborne, a young rider on the 168. A lot of preseason talk about this guy. Yeah, he turned pro last year, uh, kind of shortened his amateur career. Uh, you know, a little bit of a strange move, but the, the kid has had some great starts, had a couple of good rides in the outdoor nationals. And, uh, seems really positive about a good result here tonight. Also, you got to keep your eyes out on Martin Davalos on the 577. 30-second board is up. As soon as she turns that board sideways and starts making her way off to the racetrack, that gate could drop at any time, and we are underway. There she goes. Heat number two. like Davalos with the big jump early on. Yeah, that was a, that was a great start for sure. He was he was out there almost by himself. 
And he is really starting to pull away from the field already. And we saw that in heat number one. <laughs> it didn't work out so good. Yeah, well, see, what we're going to start seeing after the track prep, the track looked great the first time. Now some of the rocks are going to start to come up. The corners are going to get a little bit looser. Um, so the bowl turns, uh, all the rocks fall from the top down to the bottom, makes it a little more skatey on the inside. Davalos with the whole shot, starting to open up a bit of a lead. Ryan Gall, or Kyle Beaton, actually now up into second place. And that's about to change as Zach Osborne slides inside to take over second over Kevin Hogue. Interesting move there. You seen him looking down like he might have, uh, when he cased the triple before the triple, might have got a little bit of rock, some dirt stuck in the shifter. So I think he took a look at it, make sure everything was all right. Watching the fight for third. 75, Brock Tickle on yeah, the Tickle. Yamaha. Tickle was uh, sixth when he came across the line after the first lap. I think he's definitely moved up a couple positions from there. Kyle Beaton on the 33, another Yamaha right behind him. Those two fighting over fifth position right now. Across the finish line jump. That's the 33 of Beaton right now. Beaton out of Surrey, British Columbia. Back to the front. There's Martin. Makes his home in Temecula, California now. Right around South America. We're coming back to the Rogers Center for more Supercross Lights action after these words. Center, you're looking out the backside of Ryan Gold's machine as he works his way around this racetrack inside this massive building. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, perspective that our uh, that the helmet cam guys got there. Uh, definitely something uh, something that's pretty interesting. Everybody is chasing Martin Davalos, the rider out of Ecuador. And Ryan Gold on the 155. Ryan is listed in 11th right now. And there is our race leader. He's been pretty much all over the country here now, too, now that he's moved up into the States to chase his dream of Supercross glory. He's been spending a lot of time down in Georgia. Yeah, he looks really good. California. Yeah, I mean, he's really comfortable. He's got a... Uh, a little bit over five second lead already on Zach Osborne. Uh, it's going to be a big uh, confidence builder for him to, uh, to come up here, win some races, lead some laps. There's a fight for second. Zach Osborne just went by, and there's Brock Tickle on the 75. Tickle's making his way up. He, he didn't get such a good start. He's, he's, uh, he's going to be all over Zach Osborne here in another lap or two. Remember, the top nine transfers, so as the name scroll across the top of the screen, those in green. Hold the transfer positions. Those in red hoping still to improve. Tickle comes out of Cary, North Carolina. And it's really a great opportunity here in Canada with no points on the line. Just pride, really, is what these guys are racing for. But oh, Martin almost lost it. Now that was close. How much of that is luck and how much of that is skill when you pull those back in? Well, I think there's a pretty good mixture of both. That whoop section actually is really easy, but there's a little kicker. The very last one's got a kicker, and I think he caught something in there, and uh, he went for a bit of a wild ride. Up over the dragon back, and Martin continues to circulate here inside the Rogers Center on his final lap. Well, Troy Adams had the early lead in heat number one, but it didn't work out for him. It will, however, for Martin Davalos, who almost threw it away, but holds on for the win in heat number two. Here's a look at the top nine riders out of heat number two that will transfer on to the main event. And here's Aaron Bates with Martin. 
Well, he said earlier this afternoon that it was his dream to get a factory ride, and here it is, Martin. What does it mean to you to start off the season with a bang? Oh, I mean, so, so much to me. I've been working really hard. My new team is awesome. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work, and we've been testing a lot. So I'm happy about that, and I'm excited. I'm excited for the West Coast. I just came up here to just for like a practice race. So we'll see. He almost threw it away out there, but he's looking forward to pulling it back together in the main event. Monday night on speed, live life on the block with Barrett Jackson. See some of the world's coolest cars go up for bid at jaw dropping prices. When there are this many zeros involved, things are sure to get heated. Barrett Jackson, life on the block, Monday nights at 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific, only on speed. Well, we've had a couple of checkered flags, but the main event checkered flag is still to come here on Speed. Speed is taking you inside Barrett. To raise all these kids that are less fortunate than them, they spent the day reading to them, spending one-on-one -on -one time with them, just talking to these youngsters. I'll tell you what, it meant a world to the youngsters that were at the hospital, and it means a lot to these guys as well. What a great cause. These riders will be doing that sort of thing again later on in the year. Here's a look at our Dunlop starting grid for the Supercross Lights last chance qualifier. Just a few guys coming out of here to fill out our starting grid as we get set to make up the main event here tonight inside the Rogers Center. Yeah, now they're, they're only going to take four out of this. They'll take two in the Supercross class, but only four out of the Supercross Lights. So great, great start, super important. bit short. Other guy bumped right in the back of it. Looks like the 38 of Ryan Walchak in the lead. One rider down. Yeah, Walchak with a good clean start. That's what you want to do in the LCQ. Get out front. Try not to make any mistakes. Definitely try not to fall down and make life easy, easy on yourself. Get that main event. The 67 of Kyle Snellgrove running in second place on that red Honda. Now even for some of these guys who uh, might not have even won a race, maybe an LCQ inside of a stadium event, they're, they're going to have a little bit of nerves here just being in the, in the LCQ, being out front, you know, with all these people. Let's get you updated on who's where. That's actually Jad Knox on the 209 that's out in front. Carl Schlack on the 384 running in second. Zeb Dennis now in third. According to timing and scoring. You can see these guys, each one of them are going through the rhythm section differently. Came out in the same place. There's a good look at the 71 of Zeb Dennis. There's Ryan Gold on the 55. That's his onboard looking back, looking up at the sky, the roof of the Rogers Center. Well, if we don't see 71, that's a bad sign because that meant that he went by. But fortunately, oh, I think our leader stalled. He sure did. Jad Knox on the 209 stalled and is out of this one. What is it with this lights class tonight? The leader doesn't want to win the race. Not the position you want to be on or be in on the early going. Here he is, the 209. Let's see what happens. Just steps up. Hits the rear brake hard so that he can drop in and just stalled the engine, just basically locked it up. Now your new leader, Carl Schlapp. The 384. Out of Strongsville, Ohio. Let's come back and show you an earlier incident with Jeff Mort on the 143. It had some problems as this one got underway. Yeah, it comes up a little bit short, just bouncing through these. Whoever that was on the Yamaha just clipped him on the right side, took him down. And that Battle for the final transfer spot. Top four, remember, come out of the last chance qualifier. 
288 is Kyle Preston. And yeah, he's these... battling with Scotty Maidman for the last position. Yeah, these guys are banging bars here. This is uh, this is your chance to get in the main event and make a little bit extra money here. You can see the tracks, it's loosening up. I thought it was going to get more rutted. It seems to get, be getting loosier, more like a sandy texture than what I thought it would. Baldwin on the 571. Oh, battle for the lead! Gall just, uh, Gall just completely, blew it away. completely blew his chance of qualifying there. I don't know really what he did other than just uh, made a mistake jumping out of that and just jumped off the side of the track. Again, it's that not wanting that lead position here in the Supercross Lights class tonight in Toronto. Checkered flag falls. Schlacht is going on. Dennis will go with him. Schlacht's got to be shaking his head like, I can't believe I won this. Baldwin had, the had one of the last transfer spots in third on that 571. He loses it. Preston's got one. What a wild, crazy finish. And Maidenhead still qualifies fourth. Is he still in there? Let's see what happened here. Yeah, here's our leader. Comes inside and just, he just kind of stands it up and uh, just kind of jumps to the right. I really can't explain that. It didn't seem like that he hit a rock or anything funny. Just aimed right. And here you got your on board. He's going to win the lights and just just jump to the right. I really don't know how to explain that, Ralph. And when all you're seeing out of the rear view camera is the top of the Roger Center, it's not a good thing. And concrete's even worse. Slack, Dennis, Preston, Maidenhead all going on to the main event. We'll be right back to the Roger Center in Canada. On speed, don't miss the speed report. Go beyond the highlights and beyond the stats and get the why with the speed report. Tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, Port Pacific, only on speed. Well, these guys are having a great time here in Toronto. We are too. We sure hope you're enjoying the racing. Let's touch base with Aaron Bates for a Progressive Direct pre-race report. Well, it's no secret, you guys, that we don't see the usual stack group of talent that we normally see. And the reason being is that they're only racing for cash money here tonight. But it does benefit these riders to come up for a couple of different reasons. First off, they can gauge their speed against other competitors and get themselves in a race mode. Secondly, if there's anything that they need to swap up as far as bike setup, now's the time to do it before Anaheim won. Also, they're able to see where they are as far as their fitness is. For some guys, they're getting the first race students out of the way. For other guys, they've got one more month to get their homework done. All right, Aaron, thank you. Let's show you our Dunlop starting grid for our Supercross Lights main event. Zach Osborne, Martin Davalos, some of those names we've been talking about. Troy Adams looked so fast in heat number one before he crashed. He could be a player here in the main event. Yeah, the KTM boys uh, look like they've done their homework and uh, hopefully they're gonna have a good main event too. There's our 32nd board. So if she turns it sideways and leaves the track, we'll be just about underway. Suzuki, here he comes along the outside, back in third. But I believe it's Davalos out front. And just behind him looks like Michael Willard on the 84. Here goes Adams. And the 75 is in the middle of this fight as well. Brock Tickle. Yeah, definitely uh, Davalos got a great start. Getting out there where he wants to be. Let's see if he can put together a bunch of hot laps and not make any of the little mistakes that he made in the heat race. Oh, there's Osborne coming through the field with a nice move as well on the KTM. Zach uh, showing about fourth position now. Tickle getting out in that loose stuff there. Like you, you know, like I was saying, you cut to the inside, you got to make a nice turn through all that loose dirt. Now they will have fixed that uh, before this race, but. Uh, this Osborne's one of those young riders that we heard what Aaron was saying about these guys coming out here and getting a lot of experience. 
getting some preseason jitters worked out. This is a big race for a guy like Osborne. Here comes Adams making the move on Willard. Willard fighting back on the inside of the 84. And Adams. Oh! That, that was not good. Adams not went good ahead at all. and. When uh, Willard went to the inside to double-double, Adams went ahead and went for the triple on the outside. The face of the first little triple leading up to the big triple is pretty tough for a guy on a 250F. Adams came up real short there. There goes Willard on the 84, and Adams now has to make up a lot of ground that was lost. Wow, they're going to 75, a tickle up in second. Martin is gone, though. Yeah, Tickle came from a couple places back there off the start. He seems to be uh, pretty fired up, probably had a, has a pretty good warm-up uh, program and uh, definitely here to race tonight. Over the big triple. There's Osborne. Taking a little bit different line there on the, on the outside. That way he can double over the whole tabletop, not have to land on top and do a couple little funky things dropping in. Osborne on the 168 back in fifth. Here's Adams. And that rock star Suzuki. Definitely making great use of this time up here, uh, using it as a you know as a real life testing session, if you will, to gauge where they're at with the bike and uh, where he's at with this fitness. Here's your leader. Haven't seen much of him because he's been just checked out ever since the gate dropped. Now we saw earlier in the night the first wasn't the place you wanted to be as we see the gap back to second. There's Tickle of the 75. Oh! Down goes Adams! It seems to me that Willard made a mistake and Adams might have got caught up and it was just caught it out of the corner of the screen there. He just can't catch a break tonight, can he? No, definitely not. Let's see what happened to him. So Adams goes by on the left there, kind of pinches off Willard. And uh, Osborne just came in and took him down, just uh, took advantage of Adams trying to push Willard out. Now yeah, there's Osborne's teammate, Martin up front, leading this one, has about a five and a half second lead over Brock Tickle. We're a third of the way through. This young rider has really learned a lot and gained a lot of speed in less than a year by coming over here, spent a lot of time down in Georgia, training down there, now spending a lot of time on the West Coast as well. And it really has made a huge difference. Spent a lot of time training with Davey Millsaps last year. Yeah, definitely. That that has to help your speed if you're day in, day out, uh, riding with one of the fastest lights riders that there has been. And uh, having the opportunity to ride on uh, multiple Supercross tracks and learn from uh, learn from the best. There's Zach Osborne in third. It's going to yeah, be interesting to see how fast Zach can progress up through the field. So much hype about his potential. Yeah, well, this is going to be great, uh, you know, a great uh, confidence builder. And then when he gets to uh, the East Coast, he's going to have plenty of time under his belt and uh, be feeling good to start out that first race. That was Michael Willard in fourth of the 84. Here's Kyle Beaton on the 33, currently in fifth. Kyle from the West Coast of Canada, British Columbia, headed that direction next week yet. Yeah, definitely turning in a good ride. Well, these guys are a little bit spaced, uh, you know, spaced apart here, so they're all kind of riding their own race, just uh, trying to limit the mistakes, uh, you know, as the track changes, uh, you know, choose some new lines. Logan Martin on the 566 is in sixth position, and he's battling with the 57 of Tyler Medaglia. That's a pretty good fight going on there. See them come through the screen. There's Adams on the 34. Boy, he has fallen all the way back to 14th, too. Here's our leader working through traffic, getting around the 574. Fletcher Shryock. And Martin continues to lead here in Toronto. Tickle, Osborne, Willard, and Beaton giving him chase.
here in Canada. Ontario, Canada. In the opening round of the Amp Mobile World Supercross GP Supercross Lights. Martin Davila has been the story of the night in this class. Yeah, definitely has put in great laps here in the main event, did just what he needed to do, grab the whole shot. He's going to get into a little bit of lappers here, but um, got a bit of a lead, 6.3 seconds. Uh, good, but not not quite enough. Not as comfortable as you'd want to be, especially when you get into these lappers. Uh, that six seconds could disappear real quick. Holding for second place now. Let's watch their Brock Tickle, the 75. Turning in a pretty good ride right here. I'm sure he's uh, hoping he gets a little bit of help from the lappers to catch up to Martin Davalos. Martin comes from Ecuador. What do you like about that young guy? What do you like about his style? He just keeps uh, progressing. I, I personally like his, uh, his body positioning um, and uh, you know, how he holds himself. He kind of has a little bit of a straighter back. He has his uh, head and shoulders up over the bars a bit. And uh, uh, so I think that is nice form, basically. On the KTM team, his teammate is Zach Osborne right there on the 168. And here comes Willard, the 84, back and forth. Willard definitely gaining some experience. I, I, I think that he's had a pretty good uh, experience so far after talking talking with him in practice and uh, after the first heat. But, uh, you know, he's happy here. He's uh, It's a great opportunity for him. One of the other things that's great about these two opening rounds in Canada is the fact that you get to see a lot of riders together battling it out. Normally through the season, it's all east versus west until we get to Las Vegas. Here, this is the only other event where we get a mixture this round and the other round coming up in Vancouver. Let's check in with Aaron Bates. Yeah, I don't know exactly what's going through Martin Duval's head right now, but he is actually really fortunate to be even racing up here at the Canadian rounds. He had some issues that they just sort of found out about last week. Being from Ecuador, he has an American visa, but having to make it up to Canada, he needed an entirely different visa. He had to fly from Georgia, go down to LA, go to the immigration office, get the visa worked out. So he's really fortunate just to be back up here and right now all in first place. Well, there's Martin. Now let's check in on Troy Adams and see if he's making any ground up. He was all the way back to about 14. Now he's up to about eight. Yeah, I can't tell you what's going on with him, but uh, he just kind of dropped off the pace a bit. I don't know if he uh, might have had a little injury or a little bike problem. Oh, a little bit of contact in that corner. Yeah, big hit there. He just uh, seemed to just tee that guy up straight away. Seven ninety-eight, right there, that he was working his way around William Ainsworth. Battle back for seventh, so you give that spot now to Adams, and he's going to try to catch up to Tyler Medaglia now. Tyler's on the fifty-seven, pulls down sixth position. Interesting to see how the track. You can see some of the turns, Ralph. There, how. Uh, the dirt's just, it's just pushing up. It's definitely loose now. That's going to be a big part of uh, how this race finishes up. Here he comes to the inside. Adams gets the spot. That was probably one of the cleaner passes he's had all night. Night for Troy. Yeah, it seems to uh, have that corner wired now. If he could just pick off a guy there every lap, uh, that's pretty much uh, up onto the podium. So. <laughs> We'll, we'll keep an eye on his next lap. Back to the front, your race leader. Just four to go. Yeah, Martin Duval is putting in a great ride here. I mean, this is uh, this is a dream race for a guy here. You stay nice and clean. You haven't caught any roost. Uh, the lapper flags are out, clearing everybody out of the way. So. Should uh, take home a little bit of cash tonight, too. Well, I think the biggest thing, really, more than anything, is going to be 
the confidence boost that Martin's going to get out of this. Oh, I think you're definitely right. Uh, I said it, it, it's you can practice as much as you want, but being in this race setting, being inside of the inside of the stadium with the people, the crowd, there's a sense of urgency when you're actually racing. I mean, there's a race going on when you're practicing. You can stop a little bit if you want. But here, this is the real deal. So uh, I think he's off to a great start. Brock Tickle sitting in second. But again, a good ride too. He's uh, he's been really smooth. Smooth has limited his his uh, mistakes also. And there's Zach Osborne in the 168. The other KTM rider. Yeah, Zach's pretty much a rookie right now. He's he's uh, rode some of the outdoor motocross nationals, and uh, this is one of his first Supercross events here. So to be on the podium here. I'm sure that he's going to be happy. Happy with that finish. And just a learning curve for these guys, for a guy like Martin to come out and get that win. We were talking about how his growth potential is consistently going up. Now he gets the win in an opening round, and Osborne going to show up on a podium in the opening round. That's going to be huge for those riders as they head into the new season. Willard back in fourth on bike 84. KTM's got to be happy with what they got going here. They, uh, you know, whole shot at the main event. All three guys did well on their heats. All three guys are, are obviously going to be in the top four. Uh, so for a team like that, they definitely have made the best of this, uh, uh, you know, of this first race up in Canada. Let's them know that they're on the right track with the testing and with the training and whatnot. And there's been a lot of changes at KTM over the winter, so this is big for them to begin the 2006-2007 season with a strong performance here in Toronto. Yeah, Martins just hoping all these guys pull out of the way. He doesn't want to make any mistakes. A couple turns to go here and nobody, uh, nobody in his way. This one's uh, pretty much wrapped up. Last lap for Martin Navalos. It's a great feeling he's got right now. A little sense of nervousness, a lot of joy. Checkered flag for Martin as he wins here in Toronto. Martin Davalos takes the win. Tipple will finish in second. And Zach Osborne will put two KTM riders on the podium here. And Troy Adams, what a long, wild night he has had here in Toronto. Osborne's across the line. Troy Adams should come home in fifth. And let's head downstairs to Aaron Bates. Well, guys, here I am with KTM team manager Casey Lytle. Casey, your first victory in quite some time. What's the feeling right now, and how proud of you are of Martin? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, all the uh, preseason testing they were doing and stuff is really paying off. Uh, Martin looks really good, and uh, uh, Zach did really well too. He re he recovered, came back toward the end, and that's that's what we want to see. Now, there's something about Martin's riding style out there right now. He's riding more smoother and confident than I've ever seen him ride, especially from last year. What a difference a year has made. What have you guys different? What have you done differently to get him into? training program basically uh, just made him happy I mean when you're happy on a bike it, it's amazing what you can do and uh, he's he's really happy with the motor the bike the overall package is a bike and uh, we've been doing uh, whatever we could to do uh, you know just to get him uh, the speed and stuff and he's got he's an awesome rider and as well as Zach Zach's really happy and uh, you know he's he's he every, they're just growing they're young kids still going congratulations to you guys the key to success keep them happy well I'm sure we'll see a big smile top of the podium. We're coming right back to Toronto after this on speed. Good performance by Martin Davalos who takes the win here in Toronto night in the Amp Mobile World Supercross GP Supercross Lights class. Here he is with Aaron Bates. Well, he's fresh off his very first Supercross victory. Martin, all that hard work finally paid off. What does this win mean to you? Oh, it means so much to me. You know, my Atlanta, my first podium, was great and now winning it I can't even I can't even tell you what it feels like but uh, I'm happy I'm just want to thank all my all my sponsors KTM Red Bull KTM don't love FMF MSR just you know everybody for just putting the effort you know and get my bike so good this weekend so appreciate it the monkeys off his back and he's filled with confidence as we move to net Vancouver next weekend Here's a look at the results from tonight's race. Martin with his first ever Supercross Lights victory. Zach Osborne, his teammate, joins him up there. And Brock Tickle, a rider out of North Carolina, doing a nice job here tonight. Troy Adams, what a 
frustrating night it had to have been for him. Frustrating night, but he recovered for a fifth. He was he was uh, definitely back further than that. So uh, at least he put in a good effort in all 15 laps. Kyle Beaton will end up three laps down in 22nd to round out the field. Here's Aaron. Well, a nice job indeed, guys, and not so shabby for his very first Supercross. Brock, this has got to be kind of overwhelming for you right now, but how does it feel on your very first race to be up here on the podium? It definitely feels good. I got off to a good start. My uh, star race in Lucas Oil, Yamaha got me out to a good start, and I just hang in there 15 laps. I mean, you got 15 laps, people get tired out there, and uh, I just put in 15 strong laps and rode as hard as I could. What does this do for your confidence heading into Vancouver next weekend? Um, I'm actually not going to Vancouver next weekend. I'm doing the East Coast rounds and um, just trying to put a good strong finish and just go to East Coast and finish top 10 in points. That's what I'm broken for. Not such a bad way to start off the season, that's for sure. No, it's not. On Wednesday night, pride, passion, and titles are all on the line in a best three out of five showdown settled on the quarter mile. It's a duel between heart and horsepower. Lose the race, lose your ride. Don't miss pinks beginning Wednesday night at 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific, only on speed. Let's head back down to Aaron. Well, if you remember the guy that held the throttle wide open and went over the Berman Daytona, that's this guy right here. But he's back in action, and he's got the arm pump under control. Zach, what a performance out there. You're kind of battling with a bit of a, a, a chest cold, and you still came out and managed to come out on top. Yeah, um, I felt really good in the heat race. I got a little winded at the end because everything's just closed off. I got sick on Tuesday. Um, there's a little bit of a thing going around the shop. So maybe I got that, but um, everything went well. It was just a good starter, and um, it's a good way to get the season started. I'm really happy. Um, those guys rode a great race. I can't say enough about Martin and Brock. They did awesome, but um, just happy to be on the podium and, you know, just get something going here. Now, all day today, you guys have been complaining a little bit about the track and how rutted it is and how technical it is. How bad were the conditions out there? For sure, it's really gnarly right now. The Wolves are pretty much gone, but they'll you know, they'll jump up and bite you if you get overly cocky and I'm so, but um, like everything's getting rutted. Like when we first went out there, it wasn't so bad, but by the end of the race, it was really bad. But um, I tried to manage as good as I could. I got a little bit tight just because of my sickness and I couldn't really breathe that good. But you know, those guys rode great. I can't take anything away from them. And i um, just like to thank my team, Red Bull KTM, and they do an awesome job working on everything. And um, my mechanic, Al, he does awesome. Thanks a lot. Congratulations on your podium debut. Now we got a lot of great Supercross Lights action coming your way here on Speed. Of course, Speed is the home of the Supercross Lights class. We'll be moving on to uh, Vancouver next. Well, what do you think? Martin Davalos picks up his first win. Yeah, fantastic ride by those guys. I think uh, a lot of the guys, they accomplished what they wanted. They came up, got some uh, track time in the stadium, but they didn't get hurt either. Well, for Aaron Bates, Jeff Emmy. I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Toronto, and congratulations to Martin Davalos on his first ever Supercross Lights win.